Hello everybody and welcome to another Python Curses tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a few extra functions that we haven't yet looked at. This should be pretty short. I'm just going to cover a few interesting things that you can do. Now, I will note before we dive in here that I will leave the curses documentation in the description. There is a ton of stuff that you can do. I cannot possibly cover all of this in this series. And the stuff I've showed you so far is probably the most important and the stuff you're going to use most commonly. Anyways, with that said, let's dive in. All right, so in front of me here, I have the curses documentation. Now, I just wanted to quickly scroll through this to show you that there is a ton of stuff. So please do look at this if you're looking for more features from curses. Obviously, as I was saying, I can't cover all of this and it will be in the description. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is hop over to my code. You notice I have a similar example to what I had in the previous video, except now I just have a rectangle that I'm drawing on the screen and I'm going to show you how we can change the color of the rectangle. So if I go here and I run my code, so let's go Python tutorial 5.py. Notice we get a rectangle. I hit enter and then we get out. Now let's see how we can change the color of this. So there's actually a method that we haven't looked at yet, and this is going to be on our STD screen called dot. And then I believe this is adder and on. Uh, now what this does is turn an attribute. So either bold or a specific color on or off. So I can turn on, for example, like the blue and yellow color. And then that means that my rectangle will be drawn in blue and yellow and anything else that I do will be drawn with blue and yellow until I turn that attribute off. So it's kind of a semi permanent way to declare an attribute rather than adding it to the actual, I guess, add str uh, string method that we saw previously. So for now, I'm just going to put blue and yellow and then I'm going to make sure that I turn this off after I draw the rectangle. So I'm going to say adder and then this will be off like this. And I think I need to put uh, blue and yellow as well to disable this specific attribute because I could turn multiple attributes on at the same time. Anyways, let's see what this does now by running our code and notice that we're going to get a blue and yellow rectangle, right? So we have yellow as kind of the border color and then we have blue as the actual, I guess, outline for the rectangle. OK, and then when I hit enter, we are done. OK, so that's nice. Let's see what happens when we turn on, say, just a color. I'm actually interested to see if this is going to work or not. I'm going to go curses and then color underscore red rather than a color pair. And I just want to see if this is going to work. I'm not actually certain here. I haven't tried this yet, but let's give it a shot. So let's try to turn on just one color. Let's go Python tutorial five and notice it actually doesn't do anything. So I guess that didn't work. Uh, just me turning on individual color. I do need to add the color pair. Now, if I don't want that kind of outline, right, or that highlighting of the rectangle, I would just need to make the background black. So let's just use the green and black color pair and see if this is going to look any better. So let's go green and black like that. Let's run the code. And now notice we are getting our green rectangle. Perfect. Now, just to prove to you here, I'm just going to add a string to the screen. So I'm going to say this dot add string. Let's add hello world. Let's add this at maybe 510 or let's go 530. OK, and then we don't actually want to add an attribute to it. I just want to see if this is going to show up green and black. So let's run this, go here and run. And notice we have the green string because that attribute was on. And then one more example here. If we turn off the attribute before we add the string, we should see that it just adds in the default color. So let's run this now and notice it does add in the default color. OK, so that's useful. Add attribute or attribute on and attribute off. Now I'm going to show you how we can add a border to the screen. So to add a border to the screen is, I guess, useful as well. What you can do is STD screen like that dot. And then I believe this is just going to be border. Now, if I just add a border, all it's going to do is add a rectangular border around the screen. So let's have a look at how this works. Let's go here and notice we have a white border. Now, if I wanted a different color border, what I would need to do is add the attribute before I draw the border. Now, I also can specify what the border is made of. Uh, I'll see if I can actually find this in the documentation because I can't remember exactly what it is. So if we go to border, notice it's saying we have the left side, the right side, the top side, the bottom side, uh, the top left corner, the top right corner, the bottom left corner and the bottom right hand corner. Um, you can read what this means and how you change these. Uh, I just want to mention that you can actually change what the border is made of. But what I want to do here is change the color of the border. So I'm going to add an attribute here and let's just make this 
uh, orange and white for now. Uh, <laughs> again, it's called orange and white. It really should be red and white. So let's change this to red and white. So let's make this red and white. Okay, so red and white. Um, oh, why am I putting that in there? Okay, I wanted to turn it off. So let's put this down below and let's go add her off. Okay, so we're going to turn the red and white on. We're going to draw the border and then turn it off and then we'll go with this. Okay, so let's run this. And notice red is not defined. Oh, I didn't want to have red inside of there. My bad. Let's try this again. And notice we're going to get our white and red border. We then have our green rectangle and everything is working as we expected. All right, so now that we have looked at how we add the border, the last thing I'm going to show you is how we change the cursor location on the screen, which is something we want to do um, sometimes. So to do this, what we actually do is we use our screen and then we say dot move. Now, this allows us to move the cursor to whatever location we would like. Now, I'm actually just going to move it after I add all of this stuff. So let's move it and then let's just go to a position like maybe 10, 20, just so it's pretty clear to see where this is. So this allows us again just to move the cursor. So let's run this and notice that now my cursor is over here rather than at the end of this line, which is the last line that I drew. So that's how you move the cursor. And I said that was the last thing I was going to show you, but I will show you one more thing here, which actually allows you to view the keystrokes that someone is typing. So to do this, what you need to do is do the STD screen like this dot. And then I believe it's going to be echo. And inside of here, I'm going to put true. Now, what this does is it actually tells the uh, the screen to echo the keystrokes that the user types. Now, I'm just going to go inside of here and say, while wow, true. And I'm going to say that the key is equal to this dot get key. And I just need a way to exit out. So I'm just going to say if the key is equal to Q, then we will break. Otherwise, though, this should just show what we type on the screen. This might not be the exact right command, but let's try this for right now and see if this is going to work. Uh, we might have to refresh the screen as well. Not quite sure. Let's run this, though, and see. OK, so there's no object called echo interested why that's happening. Let me just have a look and I'll be right back. All right. So it looks like it's actually not this. It's going to be curses.echo. And I don't think I actually even need to um, add true there. So when I do this, it should initialize curses to show me the text. Let's try this now and notice that if I start typing something in, I can now actually see the text that I'm typing in. So hello, my name is Tim. And then, of course, I can uh, hit Q here and then that will end the program. So if you want to see the text the user types in that you need to do curses.echo, that doesn't mean that we're going to uh, easily be able to see it, because if you don't wait for the user to type in a key, then the program's just going to immediately end. So you do need to handle it in kind of the way that I'm doing right here. Anyways, that is what echo does. And of course, if I remove this, so I comment that out and then I go here and I start typing, you can see nothing's going to happen. And when I hit Q, then we exit. OK, so that is pretty much all I had for this video. Again, this is the documentation. This is what I've been referencing the entire time. Feel free to read through this. There is a ton of awesome stuff and hopefully this video helped you out. If you guys enjoyed this series, please do let me know in the comments down below. Please give me some ideas for other things you would like to see on the channel. I'm open to anything, so leave those in the comments. Of course, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another YouTube video.